welcome back. So if you watched the last live stream, you'll have seen where I'm at with this and that things are going well. Um, but I'm going to now also um, resume where I was at, which is trying to finish up this socket. So I did get myself 180K resistor. Like I said, I missed them. I actually went back and reviewed and I didn't even order it. So I don't know how I was that far off, but I was. So at any rate, we're gonna go ahead. Uh, I gotta pull up my uh, schematics again where I can see them. So this is 180K going off of pin, uh, off of the, yeah, okay. So it's gonna be off the grid connection. So I just gotta kind of get an eye of this here. All right, oh, I gotta turn my soldering iron on. So yeah, um, I'm gonna get this finished up right there. That'll be that second socket pretty much prepped and then I'll be able to connect the board connections back to the back here. Um, and then I think I will be in good shape um, to potentially work on some of the relay stuff and whatnot. So uh, I think that's what we'll work on next is the relay stuff. So getting that soldering iron heated up. Um, also, one of the things I did want to do is in this video, I will be showing you that I have uh, actually acquired a power supply. Um, so the one thing that means I need to do is quickly take a break because I'm going to set up. I want to show you guys what happens when I connect um, the when I connect this together, create a circuit and provide 12 volts to this end. So we will give that a go. We'll be back in just a second. All right, so for whatever reason, I lost audio on this. I didn't set something up right and have no audio, but I did get this Rigel, and I'm going to unbox it for you here. So uh, I was pretty excited. I'll be able to do some of the prototyping I've also been talking about, but I also am able to demo how the uh, relays work and test them out. I might also may here shortly try and also demo the FET circuit before I actually power it on to make sure it looks good and bias it in a, in a future video before we get to that point. But uh, I just... Uh, wanted to show you the unboxing of the Rigel that I got. It's a pretty nice uh, meter, or meter, it's a pretty nice power supply. It has three outputs. It has a 230 volt at, I think it's three amps, and one five volt at three amps. Uh, so I should be able to get all the power I need for anything except the high voltage. So heaters, uh, subsequent things like these 12 volt um, relays I'm working on, any kind of stuff that's solid state electronics. And then my... Uh, then I have a separate power supply you may have seen in my previous videos that's designed to do only a couple hundred milliamps or maybe it's even 150 milliamps total at really high voltages. But that would mean I could get my you know B plus railed uh, through that one as well. And it'll, it's all DC, but that's fine for what I'm working on. So uh, the uh, of course, if you saw there, it's a box inside of a box. So I'm ha uh, having to fight to get the other box out, but that's some uh, you know decent quality packaging. Um, uh, I've been wanting into and saving up to get this for a while. Uh, this will definitely help me. Uh, and I got some good reviews of this from EEV Blog. There's some good detail about it there as well. This is, uh, you know, Rigel is, I believe, is pretty much a Chinese brand as well, but one of the higher quality ones you can get out there for a decent price. I think it's about, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it was just under $400, or just over, just under $500, $470 or so dollars, uh, US dollars. Uh, so it's a, it's a bit of a spend, but um, I think it'll be really helpful for me to be able to do prototyping. Uh, so in the box, you can see it came with USB and power cables and some manuals. Uh, I'm just kind of fighting through getting those out right now. Um, I think I may even uh, speed it up, speed this up a little bit here. But uh, the effectively, um, this this is a pretty cool unit. So we're gonna I'll stop the overdub for a minute here, and we'll speed up and get to this point and move from there to the pulling it up, uh, powering it on, and testing it up. All right, you just saw me getting it out, and here it is uh, being powered up for the first time. Uh, hopefully. This is um, uh, can, is fairly clear, and I think it is, but uh, I just wanted to test it out really quickly, turn it on, power it on, and nerd out for a minute, plug in my mul uh, multimeter onto it, and see if I can get a sense of what it's like. So, uh, but uh, yeah, so that was me testing it out for the first time, and it works amazingly enough. Um, so you'll see me here in a minute, and I'm going to show you that I'll be testing it out to show you how the relay works as well in this video, but I wanted to, since I brought that up, show you this part of the video. All right, thanks everybody. Okay, so we're back now for just a quick break of me setting this up. So you can see it right here. Um, I have the power supply. I'm going to set it to 12 volts. Uh, don't think I'm going to worry too much about the current, but okay. So first of all, I'm going to get the um, 
I want to put this on continuity mode. So we'll show that here. I'm, I'm going to be doing that soldering in a second, but I wanted to quickly kind of cover this. So um, hopefully you'll be able to see. Uh, oh, that's not going to want to work. Let's see. All right, so you can see there that I have it um, in continuity mode. Uh, you don't need to see, actually, now I think about it, you don't need to see it, because all you're going to need here is the beep. So that's connected, right? So if I take these and I touch them between two pins here, there's no continuity. Uh, interesting. My understanding is, is this first pin will be the main connection, and then the second and third are normally closed and normally open. Did I put this... I did, I put it in backwards hat, whoops. All right, so so that's something I want to remember is I want this bar back away opposite from that side. So if I connect these two, we have continuity, right? But if I connect these two, we don't have it. But if I, I'm gonna leave continuity on like that for a second, and you'll see that means that switch is closed, but this switch is open. So what we're gonna do is I am going to connect the ground to the negative side right here of the connection and then I will turn and enable this port and if I touch it you'll hear the snap and it turns on and off hear that so I want you to hear the latching too I'll quickly remove this for a second latch that clicking means that we've activated the relay and right now those the first pin which is in the red right now and the last pin which is back behind it here are not connected. Oh, that's actually quite dark that way. Hmm. Trying to figure out how I can get a little bit better light on this. That's better. So, oops. So basically, every time I touch that, I get a quick latch and we short that circuit out. Similarly, if I was to now switch these two to these two pins where it's on, when I latch, it just turns it off. And a relay has two sides to it that are activated the same way. And then if I switch these two, it's off right now. When I latch it, it's on. So that's what the relay is doing. It's working like a single pull, single throw switch on either side. Or I'm sorry, actually it's working like a, you can use it as a single pull or a dual pull. This one is a dual pull, dual throw switch. It allows me to switch things. And then the way the switches are working in this circuit is they shut off the, or they shut on and off things like the overdrive and the preamp boost. Uh, and that's how switching, foot switching works, as you generally send signal to a relay, the relay opens or closes something, and that, in turn, activates this like a switch. So just like these switches on the front panel are, th so these these two switches aren't the switches, though. The, the switches are the ones I put back here. These switches will manually turn things on, and these relays will do it with the foot switch. And so we'll, we're going to potentially start trying to wire up the foot switch as well today, but... Um, we're going to finish the relays first, and then we'll, uh, after we finish that. So, just wanted to give you that quick how-to on relays. Hopefully that makes sense. I might do a more direct uh, video on that at some point as well with a little bit more depth so we can kind of dive in. But the relays are used, and they're very easy to use, but they seem intimidating. But the, all it really means is you have to provide them a good 12-volt supply of power um, so that you can uh, latch them on and off. And the foot switch itself is really just interrupting that 12-volt power. Uh, so the 12 volt power won't connect permanently like I just did like that, but it will instead come through um, the switching mechanism either of the foot switch or these switches, and these will turn on the 12 volt power. So you're switching the 12 volt relay, flips that switch, but then it actuates these switches. So it's kind of a way of separating the actual electrical circuit you're using to do the switching from the actual what's doing it. So, all right. So anyway, we've got, we'll cover that. We're gonna, I'm going to turn my fan on. We're going to try and solder in that 180K resistor. Not try. We will succeed. Um and then we'll go from there, so. All right, so that's good. That is ready to go. So as soon as I have the um, rest of the uh, board in, I can start kind of connecting in the other parts to that as well. I think I just showed a little sliver of metal in my finger. That feels great. Yes, I did. Ow, ow, ow. Got it out. Though. Okay. All right. So, um, 
Yeah, the one thing I hadn't had a chance to figure out and still haven't is exactly how to make sure I guarantee all of these pins work. But I think the way I can actually troubleshoot that would be on the foot switch. So um, I've got six here, but I really only have five that matter. And if I remember right, it's like one, two, three, four, five. Um, hmm, maybe we can think of a way to, to check these now, actually. Um, let me come back in a second. I'm going to turn this around. And I'm going to see if I can just get a short piece of wire and stick it in each of the pinholes and get continuity and see if that works for me. So we'll have continuity testing to verify that for us in just a second here. Be right back. All right. So I realized this will be actually something that will make sense to me is I can, um, I can connect these. This is the actual one that's easier because I have pins available. I think the reason I was getting confused is the other one because they're recessed. I couldn't get inside of them, but this is actually pretty easy. So I'm on this first most pin over here. And if I, I'm gonna actually have to shine a light in here because I think it writes on the inside of this exactly what pin numbers are where. So this is saying to me, pin one is this leftmost one. So it's one, like if you can kind of see that, it's one, two, three, four, five in a circle this way, kind of rotating around that way. So I will connect to what is pin one here. And I think that then this will be pin one here. Yes, it is. You, you And I'll explain this to you in a second and visually, but. That's two. There should be three. Yeah, and this middle center pin, I think, is just an alignment pin because it is not giving me anything unless it's for some other thing. And then... All right. All right, so let's get back up to the top. I'll just kind of adjust right here. You're going to have to deal with a little bit of shakiness, but we'll adjust and as we go. I'm going to have to shine a little bit of light here, but let's see if that, okay, so that's visible. All right, so I'm just kind of highlighting this for a minute so you can see. Basically, this is pin one, this is pin two. I'm blocking the backside. This is pin one, this is pin two, three, four, and five. So I'll be able to now base that off of my wiring and figure that out when I connect those up. This also, I think, is a little bit better view for us to see the relays and what I'll be doing there as well. So we'll pan out a little and view this side. All right. So let us go ahead and connect. If I recall, I can connect now. These two were my two wires that would be uh, one and five. And it doesn't really matter which one is one and which one is five. They were just taking each half of the power supply. Um, I will pop that up in the, the view here one and five left the power supply over in the top, you know, left of the skip of the layout. I'm zooming up to them right now so I can double check what I'm talking about out loud. So they come off of each half of the 1K resistors and their job is just providing the input power. That'll be the 12 volts going in to each half of the foot switch jack pins. So this is just running 12 volts of power over to these guys and then um, they will be needed on one, pin one and five. So, and then there's also the, I think the ground connection was, I ran another connection all the way over here. I think that was because the ground that's coming off of these all the way through is supposed to come off of that as well, if I recall. Um, um, so anyway, but yeah, um, so these will be pins one and five. So I will kind of dress this up out of the way and and we will connect this guy up. So I need to snip right about here. Get that out of the way. We'll go ahead and peel this back a little. And I will do... Um, one of the things I need to kind of do is now get the kinks out of this coiled part. But um, with my little... One of the things I've found is that uh, stripping wire when it's got these little bit of whirls is, is kind of hard. So I try to kind of flatten those out as best I can. All right, we'll go ahead and strip that back. So the trickier part here really is going to be I want to connect these tightly and well, like well connected, if you will but I don't want to melt too much solder onto this joint because I don't want to. Um, so I'm trying to get a physical connection and then I will put a little bit of solder down on the top 
to reduce the chance of me melting the pin or the the plastic above the pin. So these are designed more for like a through hole through a board, but I'm just trying to make do with what I have. All right, let me turn the fan back on. I might actually try and zoom in a little bit for you guys to see this. I'm wetting the tip there, and I will touch it across from behind so that I can quickly. Bingo, there we go. That's all that took. Let that harden up, and then I will um, kind of strip this guy, flatten it out, and then connect it to the other one, and then I will bend them out of the way a little bit. And then we're gonna need to figure out how to connect these guys into pins two, three, and four over to the right spots on this guy as well. So it looks like pin two, which is this one here, is going to connect to the preamp boost one, which I think, if I remember the way I did this, I wanna be OD here. So this is a preamp boost. So I'll be connecting from pin two over to a specific pin of this one. And then I will be connecting another pin off the board into this one as well. But so this is so so that we kind of I'll have this on video. But the on the back side, the right side is the preamp boost. The left side is the um, is going to be the overdrive. So, all right, I think that's cooled enough. I can snip the lead. There we go, good to go. Let that harden up a little bit. So then I'm gonna need a small jumper of wire to go there. I've got lots of little bits that I've kind of cut off of things. This is what these are good for to have around because I'm just gonna be jumpering and I have to kind of measure this. I think this one is from the top side. So it would basically be from here over to pin two. So my question is, is that long enough? Not really, I don't wanna push it. Gotta have another little piece somewhere, I swear. I guess I can use this piece of red wire. That's plenty of sick of length. So, all right, let's clean this end. This part away now. All right, so and I'll probably just feed that through the back side as well, and inside of that end. And okay, continuity, continuity. Continuity mode test. This is one of my most common tests. You'll see me do it a lot. It's just proof that things connected. So, I will take uh, my two leads and I will connect one to pin two down here and the other to the post. What I've done there, when I'm connecting to the post, I actually need to kind of show that. Let me just try and adjust this just a little bit more. I'm going to have to carefully move some stuff so I don't knock things on the floor. All right. So, if you see here, I'm connecting back to the post. Way back. Oh, no light. Let me really dial that. Wide open for a minute. Sorry, that'll be a little bit bright, but I want you to see... I am touching literally, kind of see that you can see these wires here. Those are connected down and I'm touching the post behind them, not even where they're soldered, but the actual physical post they're soldered to. Then I'm touching pin two at the other side of the actual jack. And I get continuity. So what that meant at the other end of the jack is literally back. Actually, I think you can see that. You can see that I'm coming in from here, touching the pin on the inside of here. And so I'm getting a proof that that connected all the way through and that I have a solid good connection. So now I can snip that. All right. Now let me kind of dial down the exposure there. It's not so bright. And dial back. All right. 
So next, we need to, let me look at this again. So pin four is going to go from the top of the other one over here. up here over to pin four, which will be this pin. So that one, I might as well get myself a little bit different color. We'll go for blue since I don't seem to have another lead that's that length. So we get some blue here. This is always fun doing this little kind of tedious work. This is where my big fat hands are not a benefit. It's always, that's one of the trickier parts is, is uh, I see these perfect builds and I always seem to either cut my insulation to not quite long enough or something similar so that when I go to actually put it in, it doesn't line up and then I get a buckle or funny shape. So I'm trying to be a little bit more careful about that. There we go, that's a little bit more linear. Oh, I was supposed to jumper that through. Gadzooks. All right. So now I have to reflow that and pull it out because it's actually supposed to jumper between the two. So both of them are connected to the same thing. So let me reheat the socket of the joint and pull that out. Ah. Uh. There we go. Oh, that just butchered that wire. All right, so I'm gonna pull that wire off completely again because it looks horrible. I'll try again. So what I realized there after the fact, and I'll just use this piece of purple because it's fairly short distance, is this is supposed to jumper between both of those. So I might actually have to kind of solder with that a little bit because I need to clean it and use it. I'll tell you one thing that I keep learning on accident is the solder wick, if you let it get too close, it will melt inside of this. So you have to make sure you have enough solder wick quite away from the actual plastic container or you end up melting it. So, oops. All right, we're gonna stop for just a minute. Sorry, I had to stop. I was getting the disk's file size was getting big and I would have canceled, so I caught it that time. I'm trying to be a little bit better about that so I don't lose video. I've lost it a couple times for that. All right, so that should have cooled enough to quickly snip off the excess lead. And now get this guy. I've actually got a nice flow of solder across the whole wire joint there. All right, so that is now done. Let's look here. Um, so two and four are done. One and five are connected to power. So I need to connect three over to the bottom. Uh, looking at the outside bottom of the overdrive down here, which also then connects this ground, I think, correct? Yes, there's a ground that goes all the way over, so that's why I ran this ground. So this is gonna connect as well into that bottom. Please don't tell me that I just accidentally snipped in the middle there. I can't tell. 
I might have, which will make me annoyed. Yep, I did on accident. <laughs> So how do I fix that now? I guess I can, there's another lead and I can pinch around there. It was from the previous one and I will put some, flow some solder around there. It will, you know, accidentally and unintentionally bridge the cut I just made, but I'm not trying to bridge that. I'm trying to bridge or just re-solder the wire that I just uh, pushed through and, and wrapped around to make sure it's connected on the opposite side here. So I'll carefully bend this away. I will test the continuity on that in a minute here. Once I let that cool. So we're gonna test continuity now. A mode again to make sure that I did the right thing there. That will be pin three. All the way over to the lead of this. Yep, we got continuity. Outstanding. All right, good to go. So um, that'll allow those switches to work correctly now. The switches are wired. This is now wired as well, so that when we plug that in, we'll be able to, you know, get things going outside. There are still a couple of areas in this that I didn't solder, and I think that's because yes, we'll have some leads coming off the board that connect to those. But I can snip this top one now because that one is done. So. What I just bumbled into and luckily was able to catch at the time was I accidentally snipped the lead. If you look at the picture, I'll show it and kind of, there's a jumper between those two points and I snipped them in half, but I had another lead from the wire that just ran from over here that was loose and I was gonna snip it, but instead I just wrapped it around that other lead and then soldered it onto the other lead and it created my bridge for me. So I was trying to bridge it with the leads of the capacitors, but I just snipped through that on accident. So I fixed it and we should be good. And I will be putting a little bit of silicone between these two so that they stay steady. All right, next. So that is all of this wiring done. Um, so what I'm going to move to next would be relays, as I said. Although, and now I have to think about this. I'll look at the relays. I think the relays might require that I have all of my potentiometers. I don't remember. Um... Although I can run for both of them, there is a, um, I think there is a red high voltage wire that comes from the output of the, yes. So there's two red, two red wires that are gonna come from, let me zoom out and show you the scope of what we're gonna be doing here. We're gonna come from up here. So I'm gonna connect two wires to this pin. That's the output of the voltage regulator. Drag them all the way along and connect one to each of the positive sides, which will be kind of back this corner of this top end where I, where the uh, relay's main power is. And I need to pull this relay out now. I don't want to put any heat near those guys. So this is the negative, the, not the negative side, I guess, but the closed side. And you put power on the opposite side and that's what does the relay like I was doing before. So, um, all right, welcome back. I've zoomed out a little bit. Let me. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I had some of that leftover wire that I used over here. I'm just gonna use that for this power wire. Even though power is quite often done red, in this case, I just wanna separate the relay power from other power sources so that it's a little less um, confusing uh, as part of this the amp. But So I will quickly strip off a little bit of this lead and then rewind it together again because it's gonna just go together inside of that guy right there but I will go ahead and solder that guy right there a little extra solder there on accident but that won't be the other way all right so then I can run this power down along here and I will cut this up a little bit up here. And now I'm gonna have to unwind quite a bit, but that's okay. Because one will be power for the one and one will be power for the other. 
Now, in theory, um, I don't know enough about this to know 100% for sure, but I think, in theory, I don't necessarily need to run two wires because the... Um, Sorry, I'm going to quickly check if I've got this back enough yet. Yeah, not quite. Let me give myself a measurement about here. All right. Um, in theory, you could have... Um, I would think you could have both of them just going through, but I don't know enough to know 100% for sure. So... If anybody knows out there, could I actually just run a jumper between these two powers? Or is it, you know, per the Dumble design that I need to actually have two separate ones? But, uh... Let's do a quick continuity test. While that's cooling off, we will connect to this point here. And to here. Perfect. So, um... The reason I chose to connect, if that's visible, I'm connecting from the lead of the actual um, relay, or not the relay, the uh, diode, because the diode is connected here. If I were to connect here and here, uh, those are just, the reason the diodes are, it's a protection. Basically, when you open and close that 12 volt circuit, it can create a large amount of spiked voltage that wanted to continue and couldn't because you cut the, the circuit. The diode allows for a safe route for the electricity to go to ground without it causing problems to kind of recircle back through or damage the relay effectively. It's kind of protect, it's called a protection circuit. So that worked just a charm. So now we will take this remainder of this blue lead and I kind of might just leave that curly. I think it looks good that way. So it's got an interesting kind of style. So let's just see about here. Oh. I just want to make sure I get a physical, strong, actual tight connection on the socket hole there before I solder it. Uh, you'll hear me harping about the physical connection over and over because it is extremely important. All right. So I'm trying to think now. We do need a 22 meg resistor jumpering between these two right here. Um, if I'm reading that correctly. Oh no, it's actually between the first two. So these layouts are a little different. I'm gonna, I'll show you on the overlay here, this, this relay setup is a little different than mine because on mine, each side is separate. Whereas on these ones here, they put the whole thing across the side as they may have been needed. Uh, they were kind of custom made, but at any rate, so what I'm looking at, though, is it looks like there's a 22 meg between these two. And I've got some 22 meg resistors right here, so I will put it. Now, the only thing I'm a little bummed about on this one is I could not find carbon film 22 meg resistors on Mouser. So I got these. These are metal film, and metal film tend to um, be less preferred generally. They're the, they're the cleanest sounding ones meaning that they have the least amount of noise, but they also are generally not preferred for audio applications because they tend to be too sterile. But, I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. But um, it is what it is. I have what I have. So, But I'm going to put that between these two. All right, so I'll get underneath and snip the leads off after I do that. I'm trying to think. I don't know. Is there other things that connect into that, though? Yes, there are. So I won't snip the, the anything yet, but I will be connecting two leads into those and soldering those in, but that's a 22 meg. There'll be another 22 meg that comes up to one of these guys. Uh, where does it go? Oh no, sorry, that actually goes across the treble pot, which will be kind of over here. So there's a 22 meg that also goes across between that and the one of the switches over here. So we'll have to figure that out when we get to that point. I'm still waiting on those, so when those arrive, we'll do that. All right, so I'm actually kind of thinking at this point, this is a good stopping point because I've wired everything that I have here until I get the rest of these. I will be able to then wire this part up as best I can, uh, minus any wires that come off the board, but I'll wire everything else that doesn't have wires off the board. And then we'll drop the board in and we'll finish up connecting the board and I think we'll be basically there. I will have to tie in all my grounds. I haven't finished that and I'll double check all the grounds at the end. But I am looking very good to be able to kind of button this up very soon. Um, oh, I think I was, I think I got distracted on this before, but this, uh, is my output transformer supposed to be connected into this as well? 
I think I was going to try and double check that I wasn't missing anything else. Let me think about that before I do it, but um, just before the choke. So basically, yes, that same point. So I need to clear a little bit of that guy. I just realized that I hadn't done this. I keep talking about doing it and haven't yet. So, all right. So what I'm going to do carefully here is push this down through. There's a bottom hole in all of these. I don't know if you've ever noticed that before, but I have to kind of be cautious about how I put it through because I don't want it touching the ground. So this may not be fun. I don't know if I can get a screwdriver in there either. That The, the one thing I'm running into right now is that this, this is blocking. I didn't get that connected. Um, Can I get a screwdriver in there enough? Let's try and see. Where's the screwdriver? Nope. Oh, uh, well. Um, so how do I do this? All right, let me snip off just a little bit of excess tip here. I'm gonna just flow a bit of solder along the tip, get it covered with a little bit of solder. And then I'm gonna try as I mentioned before, pushing it in from the side. I don't like the idea because I could, in theory, accidentally connect it to earth under there, but I think... All right, let's just try and get some solder in there and see if I can get it. I think I got it. So what I've done, I'll show you in a second. I forgot to solder the output transformers connection into that that needed to go there, but I now have it. So I'll show you by giving you one of these. All of these have a little bottom socket as well as the top. Well, I had the top part, not socket, but hole. This is where everything was connected to on this top side, and I just put this guy in through the bottom here and then soldered it in there. So it is now connected in as well, so that's good. So, um... All right, we'll call that good. Like I said, I was kind of talking myself through and then I just noticed something I missed. So I'll tie in the grounds next time around. I will then be very soon be able to drop the board in here, uh, but we'll, we'll get through this shortly. So, all right, thanks everybody. We will see you next time. Have a good night.